history of Superman here in Metropolis. We are indeed privileged to have Mr. George Newburn with us today. And I want to introduce uh, his uh, moderator, John Glittner. John, go ahead, buddy. Fine introduction that is in no way insinuating that I get top bitten. Don't drop Comic it. Comic relief. <laughs> okay. Yes, thank you very much. Well, hello, everybody. My name is John Gleckler, and that's enough about me, because you're not, I'm not who you're here to see. So let's get on with it, shall we, with a short but proper introduction. Today we are here to have a question and answer period with the gentleman who portrayed Charlie on the TV series Scandal. He appeared with Steve Martin and others in Father of the Bride 1 and 2 as Brian McKenzie. And uh, I think at least four of you remember him as Clark Kent and Superman in various forms for DC animated films and TV shows, etc., etc. So let's ride that applause and please welcome to the stage, Mr. George Newberg. Thanks, Gleckler. Mr. Gleckler. I want to say that name about a hundred times today. Can I get my voicemail now? Yes, you can. All right. We'll be back. All right, right. so. Uh, hold on. Technical difficulties. Yeah, it sort of set like I was going to bring a guitar out. Um, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not hearing it. I'm not hearing it. I'm doing banjos. A little deliverance. Well, welcome, uh, sir. Yeah. Good to be here. Have an opening statement, if you will, while I gather. Wow, minutes. an opening statement. I, well, I, first of all, I've never been to a Metropolis, and it's a lovely, lovely city, and you guys are so lovely to come out here. Um, I'm from Arkansas originally, so I look out my window at the hotel. At the, I, think I'm, I think I'm looking at the Arkansas River, but it's the Ohio River, which is confusing to me. But, um, <laughs> but it's a beautiful country out here. You guys are lucky to be here. Yeah, and this, uh, as far as it goes, is like a really mild day. But yeah, no, I know. I remember. I remember growing up in Arkansas. This is, this is not August. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. Well, I've got my first question for you, which is sort of a roundabout. I think it's, think it's interesting that all three of our celebrity guests this year have a six degrees of Kevin Bacon, six yes. degrees of separa yes. separation with Steve Martin. Oh, with Steve Martin. Steve Martin. Really? Steve Martin. Oh, oh, so Tom Welling was... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. You've got uh, Tom Willing with Secret by the Dozen. Right. Michael Rosenbaum with Bringing Down the House. And you, sir, with Father of the Bride. Uh, yes. I didn't know Bringing Down the House, though. I didn't know. Uh, what was that? Was that that was, it was Steve Martin, Queen Latifah, and Michael was a lawyer in the, in the company. Gosh, and there's, there's a joke I'm not going to do involving a glass of water and separating two halves of a word. Oh, you okay. can ask him when you see him. Okay, yeah. But that was my way of leading into having all work with Steve Martin. Yes. What would you say to Steve Martin as Mr. Mixia Spitlick? So, don't do that to me. What do you mean, as Mr. Mixia Spitlick? That's the one. Mix, how do you say Who can say that word Mixia the best? Mixia Spitlick. What is it? Mixia Spitlick. Mixia Spitlick? I thought it's Mixia Spitlick. Mixia I have an old record where he says Mix Patol. Mix Patol. <laughs> so, I'm a, yeah. Mixy, Mixy, that's good. As a matter of fact, I had to narrate a, I narrated a book about Superman, about all of the, the super. I should actually have that book out there. I did the audiobook version of it. And I, pardon? No, I, I have to look up the name of it, but it's um, I had to say Mixy Pedal like in the book, and I remember I, I, I got halfway through the book, and someone said, you know, you've been mispronouncing that word, and I had to go all the way back and through the computer and figure out from, but. Uh, I actually had to say my name uh, as the narrator saying, actor George Newbern, or George Superman, just as So that was very surreal to reference myself in a book. Yeah, yeah. You can do your own introduction. Yeah, it's very weird. Blame yourself if it goes wrong. Exactly. No, I wasn't actually in that. I forgot. <laughs> so, but well, the other things, one of the other things you were in, which oddly enough, both other guests get to claim this role yeah. as well. You've all worked with Christopher Reed. We have, we have. Yeah, I, I don't know what Michael and Tom Welling did. So. Uh, it was was the small episode was Rosenbaum acting with the nurse with just Tom? 
Just time. Well, they were on the so, same. So Tom did. So Chris Reeve did did do something on Smallville. Mm -hmm. two, two episodes. He was a professor of some sort. Yeah. Doctor Swan. Doctor Swan. Uh, I uh, I did my second movie in Los Angeles when I got there. I was uh, sorry, I was 22, and it was a remake of His Girl Friday with mm -hmm. Burt Reynolds and Kathleen Turner and Chris Reeve. And uh, I got to be in this movie, and all my scenes were with Chris Reeve and, and uh, Burt Reynolds. And I was like, oh my god, I was starstruck. I couldn't believe that I got to. Mostly, it was Superman. I could, I couldn't believe that I got to hang out with Chris Reeve. And. Uh, so yeah, we spent three months in Toronto and Chicago um, shooting on location, and um, uh, it was surreal. And I asked him, I said, I said, does it bother you that um, that you're so famous from Superman? I mean, I know because people must come up to him, all, and they did come up to him all the time. And he said, he said, you know, at first it bothered me, but then I realized it's really great to be known for something that iconic and fun. That's kind of the way I feel about yeah. this doing the animation stuff because it's just. Been, such a lovely, long, sort of long acting part of my career. So. so the recognition, I saw a clip on YouTube, and I've often felt this is probably something you understand immediately. A voice actor is Clark Kent until he opens his mouth, then he's Superman. There was a, a short video where you were in a um, airport. Yeah. You were at the ticket booth and you just said, I got a connecting flight. And this guy's like, oh my gosh. It's, it's true. It's true. Yeah. And it's, 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 that and then a couple of uh, either a Verizon tech on the phone. I was talking to him. Wait, is this George Newman? I didn't even know that. I got something wrong with my phone. Superman. No, it was crazy. But, uh, and then the Delta, the little lady at the Delta the counter. Uh, she just kind of looked up like, what the heck? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it doesn't happen very often uh, with, with other things, but that. People really have, have remembered that voice. That and suffer off from Final Fantasy. That's about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so. so then you take that part of it, and I, I was going to ask you, and I've already got an answer. If you wore glasses when you were recording those lines back in the day for Superman, I didn't wear glasses. I didn't need them then. Did you? <laughs> oh, hello. Did you feel compelled to put them on when you had to record Clark Kent? No, I didn't. Uh, but uh, sometimes I would uh, I would do the arm pose yeah. sometimes just to <clears throat> get in that pose. Actually, it's a great pose. I've heard this from different psych psychologists that they call it a Superman pose. Mm -hmm. When you're feeling weak or when you're feeling kind of down about something, it's actually they say get in a Superman pose with your chest out and just kind of sit that way for like thirty seconds, and you immediately feel better. It's not just Superman. It's like a really great thing for your body, just for your information. Everybody now. Everybody give me a Superman pose and everyone feeling good. And good. We, could, we could all use a Superman pose, right? Yeah. 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 So we don't have time for that. I'm going to ask you about uh, some of the uh, some of the emotional aspects of being a voice actor. In particular, the man who has everything when you have to tell Van that he doesn't exist. Did you just Muscle that one out as an actor, or did you draw from something? Well, I mean, with anything that you do, I, I for for the voice of Superman, I usually I sort of channeled my my older brother's. A, he's an orthopedic surgeon, and he was a an Eagle Scout, and all these things that I wasn't. I was a bit of a cut up and a, a, a ne'er do well. I was bad at sports, bad at a lot of things, but but I always thought of my brother doing Superman because he was just sort of a a, a, a Boy Scout. And, and always did the right thing and kind of, there was not a lot of gray areas with, with him. But he was like, but what if? Um, uh, so yeah, I, I sort of drew on my brother doing, doing that. Any, any time he sort of had to get, especially sort of, um, things were black and white and, and very uh, sort of philosophical advice. So yeah, draw on that. So then, I don't remember if this was a personal conversation or something I read online at one point, but one of the, Few complaints anybody ever had about Justice League animation was that Superman would go, Ugh! and if he's that tough, he doesn't ever have to grunt. So you probably didn't do nearly as much grunting as Kevin Conroy did throughout that series. So we're talking the difference between grunting, well, like being impacted, being punched. Oh, impacted. Yeah. There's a there's a throwing punch, which is, Ugh! and then a getting hit, which is. Ugh! 
which is, ugh, which is much more exhale. But it's hard to do, actually, when you're in the, you have to ask, the, our, we had a great voice director named Andrea Romano. Uh, and she would we always have to ask her, say, Andrea, am I getting hit or am I throwing the punch? How far away? How far am I flying in the air? And and my, and I constantly got electrocuted, which she, which first of all can't feel very good. But the first year or two, I kept saying to Bruce Tim, the, the the head animator and the writer, and I said, Bruce, can you knock off knock it off with the electrocution? Like, not only does it, you know Superman's. You know, he needs to toughen up a little bit here, but it's incredibly hard to extend vocally uh, a high-pitched electrocution sound because your, your vocal cords are constricted. You're going, I mean, it's impossible to do without giving yourself a nodule on your vocal cord. But I would do it, and then I would they'd have to wait till the end of the session to do it because I couldn't talk after it. But, right. Uh, the other things, you know, yelling, and I can do that all day long, but... <laughs> the construction is hard. <laughs> right. But it seemed like they, they, they went to that more often because I can't recall a lot of moments in the live action Superman's where he was. No, no, they yeah. was just they well, just well, like to do that. You know? Somehow an animation that felt that was just yeah. part of the experience. Yeah, let's like to draw it. It's fun to draw. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's see. Come on, Black Lord. Yeah, I'm working on it. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, well, yeah. Uh, there was another clip I saw where you were talking about, I believe, uh, your son said, Dad, did that hurt based on oh, yeah. Superman being punched? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad, my, I've been doing this for so, for so long. Uh, my son, who's now 19, I think he was four or three or four when I first started doing it. And, I, and Warner Brothers had this, uh, it's like a kid's outfit. You put on the cape and they, a plastic thing where you, you, know, you punch the, the S and it would, you know, like, Let's go to the moon, or whatever. Uh, Trace justice in the American way, or whatever. All the things that Superman would say, and he would just run around the house doing that. <laughs> and uh, I kind of turned to my wife and I went, "This is, this is a surreal moment. This is a surreal moment when your kid is running around and your voice is coming out of his chest." <laughs> and uh, and, um, and I think the teacher in preschool asked him what what, her, what his dad did. He said, "Oh, my dad's Superman." So that was that was fun. That doesn't get to happen very often. He doesn't say that now, but he did. Michael Keaton had a story when Batman came out. His son was really young, and they went to the premiere, and they they made him a Batman suit. That he went to the premiere and just kept it under the chair. And, he was, and whether Michael was putting these words in his son's mouth exactly or not, he's like, "Just Dad, is there if we need it." <laughs> so I just building on that. I, I, it seems to me that I think that the animations have a stronger emotional attachment than some of the live work I've seen. You mean in, in general? Yeah. Audience response and stuff. Yeah, like, you know, I think that's true. I mean, and I, I think, um, um, I don't know the reason for it, but it's less, uh, you guys could probably tell me what you think, but but I think in an animated format, it's a little cleaner and, you're, and less distracting and you focus on the emotion of the characters in the animation. It's a little, it's sort of more neutral and less specific as a live action as it's, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I think you're able to, you listen more to the voice and you can get lost in the animation a little more easily, yeah. I think. Yeah, well, it's, it, it was Justice League, but it wasn't Superman. It was the, the one where uh, Arthur's brother wants to claim the throne, so he chains him to an underwater volcano and he stabs an eye through the volcano and just hangs. Arthur's son there. Yeah, yeah. It, my son was old enough to just old enough to carry and talk, and uh, it was a rerun. So I was going to turn off the TV, and I'm reaching for the remote, and he goes, "Dad, <laughs> is that baby going to be okay?" <laughs> <laughs> the baby going to be. So I picked him up, and I'm like, "Well, let's find out," because you know you don't blow that moment as a parent. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's right. So I'm going to be honest with y'all. I think that uh, I. Ask some reasonable questions, and I am not asking that you ask unreasonable questions, but I think we're ready for some uh, arm stretches and raises. And who's got a question for Mr. George Newburn? There's one right here. Right there. Oh, Supergirl's got you. Sure. Oh, she's first. What a surprise. <laughs> what do you prefer, live action acting or animated voice acting? Um, it depends on. Uh, if how I'm feeling. If I'm feeling 
uh, like I don't want to go out in, in public and just be seen or take a shower, animation. Uh, but, uh, you know, on-camera stuff is fun, too, because you can, uh, live action is, you see more people. You go on a set, and there's 100 people there, and you're, you're there for 14 hours, and it's, it feels like a real job. It feels like you're really, you're tired at the end of the day. Animation is uh, super duper fun, and the people are very nice, but it's a little more solitary. You're either, you're either by yourself or just with an engineer and maybe one other actor or something, maybe. So it's, it's, and it's not as hard. It doesn't take as long, uh, blah, blah, blah. But, but they're both very different, uh, both different skill sets, uh, I would say, but, but funner and easier maybe, but longer term on camera, I sort of, I feel a little more yeah. like a man, like I went to work. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to ask you a quick, quick question in between here. Um, I've listened to other voice actors at conventions that do more anime, et cetera, et cetera, and you'll ask me about some aspect. I'm like, well, I wish I could give you a better answer, but on those, they're like, boom, 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 two takes, moving on, go, 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 done. Was Justice League a little, it sounds like you had to give more direction about, am I this, am I that? Was it a little more relaxed, or was it? Oh, it's, it's usually very, you know, very, everyone's really lovely and nice, but, but you're reading off a script, and, and a lot of times they just give you the, the pages, it'll say line one, Superman says, get to the watchtower. And I'll say, Andrea, what's happening? How far away is the person? Am I angry? Am I, I mean, because they don't give you the, in a script, a lot of times you get the editorial comments and you know it, what it is in context. But, but when you do a video, especially in a video game, they have to tell you exactly what's going on. The video games are exhausting, but uh, unless we get the whole script, which we usually don't, we just get the line and you have to ask, you know, and, and, and if the voice director is good, they'll say, okay, we're in the Watchtower, and everyone's, everyone in the league is here, except, you know, Green Lantern flies in at the end, and, you know, this is, volcano's about to explode, and it's really tense, and Superman says, you know, it's a live five or whatever, and I'll do the thing. Uh, or it's an intimate thing between you know, Wonder Woman and Superman, and they're just chatting quietly off the side. But, but uh, what's the question again? Um, no. Um, the question was, are you listening to what I'm saying? Or you just yeah, no, no, no. I, I'm just, now I'm just talking about I was asking if, you, if like, an, but, in, in um, anime, they do uh, rapid fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, it's it's not that rapid fire. Uh, if if everyone is, to, like, everyone's together, uh, sometimes we would have recordings where there would be all 10 or 10 or 15 people, especially during Justice League Unlimited. I would have Mark Hamill and, you know, everybody in the world would be there. And um, that was usually quick. We do two takes, two takes of each one. She try to keep the pace up. But if you're by yourself, sometimes you get to take a little more time. Very good. Yeah. Supergirl. Okay, I know that Andrea Romano preferred to have all the actors in the room yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. And one of the things about the DCAU is they didn't exactly skimp on voice actors. They did mm -hmm. quality people like yeah. yourself. Who was Thank you. probably maybe one, two, three people who you got to work with who you were kind of starstruck with in the animated world? In the animated world, let's see, who do we have? Um, well, um, Mark Hamill was the first one that I just was couldn't believe because I just idolized Mark Hamill. I just think he's so great and so funny. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. Um, my buddy Chris McDonald, who I idolize, is a good buddy of mine. He did a couple of voices on that. Um, who else? Uh, Clancy Brown. Uh, we both went to the same school. He's he's a longtime old friend, but I just I'm just obsessed with his voice. And his head is like this big. His, and when he opens his mouth, it's like his whole head vibrates. It's like licks the door. It's like just it vibrates in a way people are just born with. Parts, you know, their head, their way, the way their vocal cord and their head is attached, and they have a natural resonance that you just have or you don't have. You know? So, uh, so those are some names that I. Did you get to? With. You get to work in the room, stare down Superman versus Lex. Just let's go. Oh yeah, this yeah, thing yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's a great guy. Another question, sir. Uh, in your in your time doing the Superman voice work. Do you have a, uh, a favorite or most memorable uh, line or even episode uh, that you'd like to share? 
You know, uh, it's the, the the cardboard speech. I think is one of my favorite ones. And I forgot which episode is it. Is it the cardboard speech is from? Uh, sometimes I feel like I live in a world of cardboard. Uh, it, I believe it's from Coming, a man who has everything. Coming, uh, oh, it's the last dark side. Is it the last episode? He's yeah. Dark side. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that one, I just I love that speech because I thought mm. it spoke to the sort of his dilemma of being human and yet you know he, he breaks things. <laughs> it's hard to be. That yeah, one is hard to be him. Sorry. Yeah. That one's brilliant. A to B. You got yeah. that, and then he, he's and Superman just waiting. Yeah. Punches in, waits, punches in. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was yeah. masterfully yeah. done. Yeah, that was fun. Another question is pending. Uh, when uh, Final Fantasy VII came out, uh -huh. um, how did it feel to voice Sephiroth again? Well, I didn't actually. Uh, they they recast the entire cast. This is a different. This is Final Fantasy. It's a different. Movie. But Final Fantasy VII, they recast everybody. I'm not angry. I'm not bitter. I'm not resentful at all about it. Completely. Completely. No. Now, I did ask if there's something we don't want to talk about. Was yeah. that it? That might have been it. No. No, that's fine. It's fine. No, 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 it's fine. Where'd you go? Oh, sorry. Hi, quick question. You yeah. might have covered it earlier. When you have to voice Bizarro, what kind of direction do you get? What did you ask? There wasn't it. They just said, Bizarro. This is way too bizarro. It's just kind of a nutty, you know, uh, the Superman with about ten too many beers and uh, you know, hanging upside down. Maybe I don't know. Maybe, yeah. He might have been a little more of the yeah. constrictive aspect. Maybe yeah, yeah. Try to have, have to listen to that voice again. But yeah. it was fun. She's searching. Oh. I'm going to video this for my wife, who's not here. We just finished binge watching Scandal. Oh, yeah. It was like amazing. Oh, fun. Thank I mean, you. it was like so. Thank you. Anyway, uh, it's, it's, was it hard like, to, you know, do the voice of Superman, treat just as American White, yeah. and to go and play, you know, uh, a yeah, psychopath. Yeah, a psychopath and assassin. It was, yeah, yeah it was. It was, uh, it was, it was awesome. But anyway. You know, it's crazy. My, I, it's, if you do it as long as I've been doing it, you're lucky enough to keep doing it, you know, you, you hope that you're. The parts you play, you get to cycle and try other things. So I'm either really, really good or really, really bad. I have uh, the, that show Scandal. I played just a, you know, a, just a for hire assassin. Who just you know, tortured people and did all kinds of things Superman would never do. Uh, but you know, it was fun. It was fun, and I got to be funny, and uh, and it went for seven years, which was really nuts. That's good. Um, but uh, you know, a lot of the procedural shows, all the. Gosh, all the CSIs and NCISs and Law and Orders, I've kind of, I think I've done all those, and every one of them I've played a rapist or a terrible oh. person. <laughs> you know, whatever, just, uh, just psychopathically awful people. But then, you know, Father the Bride, I play a good guy, yeah. Superman, I play a good guy, so. Um, who knows what's next? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. This guy thinks he's it's, Superman. It's fun. We had a great time. We had a great time doing this game. Another one. Coming around the corner. Was it any different when you did the Justice Lord Superman compared mm. to the regular one? Did you say Justice Lord? Yeah. I, you have to refresh my memory. The alternate dimension. So, what, 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 what was, was it a different voice? I can't remember. The it was definitely a different attitude. He was a, I'm going to lobotomize everybody to stop uh, I, I am not remembering the difference. If you could bring it up on your phone, I could remember. Pardon me? Oh, okay, okay, yes. Now I know what you're talking about. I've done several sort of alternate Superman types for some video games and some movies, and I get them a little confused. But uh, yes, I remember that now, and I basically just made, just sort of tried to focus on a Superman who is, has no patience and is someone who doesn't give people a second chance. And you just, he was just that. Kind of the, the darker side of Superman, not not overly angry, but just kind of nihilist, kind of the cynical guy, which is not really the Superman that I know and love. But sure. it's you know they're trying to do different things with yeah. the story, so this one. But yeah, you can say that that was fun to be Superman, but fun, different Superman. Yeah. Right. Another one. So I got one. But I'll wait. When you were growing up, were you? Uh... A comic book or Superman fan, or did that come 
as you got into the role? Um, you know what? I growing up, I was into comic books, but I wasn't necessarily into Superman as much. I was into Mad Magazine. I was a fanatic about Mad. I loved Cracked Magazine. I loved uh, uh, the Archies. Uh, I loved um, what was it called? What's the it's called Weird or something? Yeah, what was it called Weird? Weird. Creepy, yeah, creepy. I, I just, I would read at camp, summer camp, I would just read comic books like that. But I, I was not into uh, Superman at, at the time. I mean, I, I think I read some, but I wasn't as focused on it. So I, I, literally, I went in for this audition because Tim Daly was busy, and uh, he was doing Wings, and my agent said, go down to so-and-so on Burbank Boulevard, there's an audition for a, an animated thing. I didn't know I was, I just thought it was a one episode thing, and I get there and say, oh, it's Superman, oh, Superman. And I just did the speech, and, uh, and then I'm here 18 years later talking about this, it's crazy. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, as I've done it over the years, it's been, you know, fantastic, and, and, and what an opportunity to get to be part of, a, of, a, of, of an international icon that people love, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a gift, you know. It's, a, it's unlike any of the other jobs I've ever done because it's it, it resonates with people in, in, in a way that no other job can. Sure. Really, you know. So, yeah, I'm really, really, really lucky. Coming around, round two. Hey, got another question. Sissy. Um, do do you and, and the other Superman, as it were, ever yeah. like hang out and kind of? I, you know, we don't. I, I hang out more with the other leaguers because I see with these conventions, and, and uh, I met Tom, uh, Tom Welling, uh, I guess a couple, a year ago or something. Mm -hmm. uh, let's hopefully see him again tomorrow. Um, but I, I mostly probably see Wonder Woman and Hawk Girl and uh, Kevin, who does Batman, and uh, Michael Rosenbaum. Uh, we see each other socially and uh, at these things. So we do kind of hang out. We don't text chain, we don't text each other. Carl Lumley's a lovely guy, I love Carl. Uh, Andre Romano, talk to her all the time. So she's great, yeah. Ashley's coming around, I got one for you. Um, Ashley, do you have any questions for Ashley? Yeah, I have a question for Ashley. Yeah. Um, you know, she was talking about being in the situation with in-laws. Was there any art imitates life, life imitates art? Uh, well, my name is George. Steve Martin's character's name is George, and my late father-in-law's name was George. So, except my father, yeah, actually, my wife's dad was, looks, looked like Robert De Niro, and acted like Robert De Niro, not that he was like Steve Martin, but he was, oh man, he did not, he liked me kind of, but he was definitely like, hey actor guy, how are you gonna support my daughter, you know, and uh, all that stuff. So, so, uh, you know, it's just uh, a nice man, nice man, God bless me. But, you got one? Hi, um, we are bringing our friends. How was the experience working with, with the cast and crew over there? The Great, I, I went to school with David Schwimmer. We both went to Northwestern. Also, Clancy Brown went to Northwestern. Uh, and uh, I'd, I'd known Matt Perry for a long time, so, and Lisa Kudrow was my uh, improv teacher at the Groundlings in Los Angeles right before she got that job I and mean, she just didn't show up one week. We're like, what's Lisa? There's our teacher. Uh, and then, um, and the other people I just sort of had seen socially. Uh, and uh, I was supposed to actually test, uh, screen test for David Schwimmer's part when it came up, but I took a different pilot, smart move. Uh, and uh, well, it's not as bad as my friend Craig Bierko was literally offered Matt Perry's part and he turned it down for another pilot that didn't go. And uh, yeah, so I know, but he's, he's, he's still he's still on therapy, whether it maybe. Yeah. Uh, but no, we, we had a great time. It, you know, I'll tell you, when you do a sitcom, most of the writing in sitcoms is just terrible. And you guys can watch some of these sitcoms on TV and they'll stay on for six, seven years and you can hear the audience laughing like someone's just like going, <laughs> you know, and it's just not funny. But you watch it long enough, and it just kind of, kind of becomes comfortable. It's like, oh, no, look, facts of life. Not that funny. No, I enjoy watching those people talk. But Friends was a different animal. It's just like, you know, MASH was a different animal. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Everybody Knows Raymond's a different animal. Um, Seinfeld's a different animal. You know, they're, 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 I don't know, 
you could probably set, you know, curb your enthusiasm, whatever. Mm -hmm. These are shows that are really funny and well written, and you genuinely laugh. Friends was a, Friends was a, the writers write things that are genuinely funny, and the actors are all excellent. So when you come on as a guest star, I did three episodes of that show. It's it's like taking a you can just exhale a little bit because you don't have to work so hard. And you know, there's like you can feel it in the audience on the show night when you shoot it. Like the laughs come like sort of in waves. So you just kind of go, oh, and I can just kind of not have to work hard at this. You just sort of do what they give you, and connect with the other actors, and it's going to be funny. And you just, but usually you have to work really hard, and you kind of, but it, you know, do the joke, and the writers are going, ah, 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 and they're kind of desperately laughing, and the audience just knows, it's, you, know, you guys know, if it's not it's, something's not funny, it's just not funny. But that was a rare job where people were funny and it was a great experience. So. Hi. Hey. Um, I was just wondering, did you notice an uptick in the writing from season one to season two of Justice League? Whenever Dwayne McDuffie was added on? Yeah, I did, I did actually. It's also when a show doesn't know whether it's going to keep going. You know, after the end of the first season, usually that's when they go, hey, the show's well received, and then they get better writers jump in and, they, and then. Usually, that's when that happens, and that's exactly right. I think you're spot on. Hey, hey George. Hey. Do you prefer stage acting, or TV acting, or movie acting? It's all, I know you've done them all. Yeah, I've done one. It's it's. Uh, I was. I started out doing musicals. I was a. I was a ballet dancer for uh, six years, and a music, musical theater person in Chicago and in, in uh, Los Angeles, and New York, and stuff. So, uh, but. But if you to compare them all, they're all just the same thing, just different muscles. Um, uh, I, you know, I think theater work is harder, um, and it takes longer. And it's uh, as an adult, as you get on in years, it's harder to maintain that kind of stamina. Uh, but it's super fun, uh, and I would think that film and TV is the most lucrative of all of them. It's a good way to you know to pay for your, all your children's college bills and things like that. Uh, but and animation is its own special little corner over here. It's still acting, but it's it's more um, more intimate, uh, short short spurts of work. And and love, actually, the loveliest people are in animation. The nicest people are in animation because they're just there's no there's no BS. They don't have to pretend to be a Woody you know, they, but they're, everyone's just lovely in animation. That'd be the biggest thing. Hey George, um, do you have a, <laughs> do you have any um, back behind the scenes tidbits about bloopers or anything that went really wrong or really crazy that you want to share? Dur during during what? During um, anything like especially live action, maybe Friends or, or um, go back to design or anything. I think I remember we were doing Father of the Bride. Steve Martin uh, was my first day on the set, and I had I, Kim Williams and I were behind the front door, and we were they shot it in order, so we were supposed to come to the door and meet him for the first time. And Kim and I were like, I'd already I'd already done a bunch of movies, and I, I was like, I cannot believe that Steve Martin and Diane Keaton on the other side of this door, and we have to. But it kind of worked for the scene because I was nervous and all the rest of it. But right before we did the first scene, I had. I had something in my eye, and I, and I, and I kind of rubbed it, and I think I scratched it. I got like some kind of something on my eyeball, and it like scratched my eye. And of course, it's, it's blinking and it's watering, right? And 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 the the light goes on on the door to open the door for the for the queue. I open the door, and I'm like, hey, is this bank is a nice music? And my eyes like doing that. And so they they cut. And they go, hey, are you okay? Blah blah blah. Are you dry? And they go, okay. And so they put the stuff in the eye, and it calms down a little bit, and. And right before the next day, the doors, they, they have a little light that goes on. If you can't really hear, so they have dialogue on the other end of the doors. And so we have to watch your cue because you can't hear it, right? So the light goes off. Uh, right before the light goes off, Steve Mark goes, whatever you do, don't think about your eye. And of course, we, we open the door, we're dying laughing and started it. But he knew, he knew oh, this young actor's coming out here and freaking out about his eyes, so I had to, to do that it. That was some nice good. channeling right there. That's that was good. Yeah. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Another one. 
Uh, you mentioned Craig Bierka. Uh-huh. I was wondering if you met him through musical theater, because I know he's down Broadway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he was my roommate at, at Northwestern. There's a whole lot of Northwestern connections. Dave Schwimmer and Dermot Maroney was our classmate. And, uh, gosh, Steve, Steve, uh, uh, gosh, Steve, uh, goodness gracious. Colbert, Steve Colbert was in our group of eight, there were like eight or nine of us, and he was, Steve Colbert was absolutely silent, he never knew he was funny, he wasn't a theater major, but he hung out with all the theater major people, English major, and then suddenly, 10 years later down the road, was like, wow, Steve Colbert is hilarious, he was plotting, he was, yeah, so, uh, what was, the, now where was, it? what did I just say? Did you know? Did I know, Craig, Craig and I were roommates at, at school, and then also when we got out of school, and uh, he lives in New York. We talk all the time. Another one. Another one. Hey, question for you. Given the state of the world today, yeah. like, uh, mm. how cynical people mm. are and how much bad stuff is mm. going on, what do you feel Superman can represent in this these times, the 21st century? Wow, that's a great question. I, I would hope that uh, Superman would be sort of emblematic, symbol, symbolic, whatever the word is, uh, of common sense, the center way, the right way, the non-spin way, the just, the, the, listen, this is the right thing to do, and when something is obviously wrong, we don't pretend that it's not wrong, you know, for whatever side of the polit- political spectrum you want to be on, but the obvious ones are pretty obvious, but uh, I, would, I would think that the, the best takeaway from Superman it would be in today's world, you know, don't disengage, keep engaged, and you know, just because you disagree, don't hate the. You know, you don't have to. What's the word? You can disagree without hating the person or yeah, yeah, getting yeah. in a fight. You can disagree, yeah. but be civil and let's get about our business. You know. I think it's your your speech in the episode where Superman was like, I, "I'm done," and Green Arrow was like, "No, no, no, no. We still need you." And then he's like, "Okay, well, we can do this. Right. We right, can do this. Right. right. Yeah. That yeah. Memory. Yeah. That's that's one of the. I would say Superman is not hyper political. Uh, he's the. I think he's anti political. Just like let's. Let's take a breath and you know, come come to the center and talk about this. And get, mm-hmm. get not, you know, let's not go to our corners, basically. Yeah, George, take you back to the sitcom question again. Yeah. Um, what was it like? You shared a little bit about working on Designing Women with yeah. Jesse Carter and that oh, cast. Wow. It's just a wonderful cast. Wow, that was such a great experience. It was my first job in L.A., and, I, and I, I'm from Arkansas. And the producer, Harry Thomason, did a TV movie called The Blue and the Gray. It was in northern Arkansas, and, and I got my SAG Union car doing it. It was so fun. And, when I came out to LA, I, I, his wife Linda Bloodworth Thomason wrote the show, and it was they were like four episodes into it, and I had an audition, and it was my first audition in LA, and I went in there, and I was like, oh my God, Harry! So I had an Arkansas connection right right away, and then I got the job, and then Harry called me, and said, I just want you to know that I didn't give it to you because you're from Arkansas, I gave it to you because you were the best person that came in, so that that, that was fun, uh, and. Uh, Linda, uh, Dixie Carter played my mother, who's, you know, that whole show was really spoke to me, really lovely people, and Dixie passed away about, I think about six or seven years ago, and uh, it was just a really smart, funny group of ladies, and um, kind of ahead of his time in many, in many ways, you know, sort of talking about politics that, you know, that was not talked about at, the, at that time, and also because it was from the South, which was nice, because people think, you know, everyone from the South is, is you know, backwards in many ways, but that's not true, clearly. But um, uh, some are, but you know, some are everywhere. But uh, but I, it was such a lovely experience because the, the writing was so funny and, and good and they were lovely and, you know, what's 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 not to like about that as a first job in you know, Hollywood. So. Yeah. Do you have a comparison between that and let's skip forward to Friends, like just in the production sense of how a TV show was made? Uh, just, uh, well, that was probably, there was eight, 15, 18, 15 years or something in, in the difference, and, and the, the sensibility was different, comedy was a little sort of meaner, corner more raunchy, designing one was still on the edge of being sort of talking around issues that, you know, that were maybe, uh, you know, on the racy side, but, you know, Friends was just flat out, you know, they just <laughs> went for it right there. Yeah. Out of curiosity, have you and Clancy Brown ever applied for the same, or auditioned for the same job? I'm sure we have, and I didn't know it, and he didn't know it either. They, they sent out lists, and you go do it. And, Has he ever yeah. told you there can be only one? <laughs> 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 no, that's fun. No, that's, that's it. Uh, hey, here we go. What was it like working with Mark Hamill? 
you know, I was what I was really surprised about mostly is that Mark Hamill's his his range with the Joker. He's just going all over the all over the keys of the piano with that thing, and I was just like, whoa. Because that's, you know, I just remembered him as a younger person in Star Wars, and I just thought he was sort of this ingenue voice. And he's, and in real life, he's just sort of theatrical, like kind of really, uh, you know, boisterous person. I was like, who is this guy? So that that was the biggest surprise. I was like, what the heck? It's really fun. He's hilarious. He's not the kind of guy that spent maybe a little more time than you did. No, oh, he did a lot of that. Yeah. Well, it sounded a little bit like Fleabag. I was like, oh, Fleabag. <laughs> Uh, so you did an episode of one of my favorite shows, Boston Legal. Oh, oh. Um, what was that experience like, specifically working with James Spader? <sighs> well, I should give you the sanitized version that it was lovely, but he was actually not that fun to work with. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, there's this, there's an unspoken there's a when you're a regular on a TV show, all the guest actors that come in, you just be nice to everybody because they're coming in cold and they don't know how things work and da 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 da. So I came in as a guest person, and he's not that much older than me, and I've done just as much as this guy, and he was just not kind. I hate to say it, I don't want to say it, but it, but it, 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 it was hard because I went up on my words a couple times, and he would just go, do that kind of thing. Uh, I was like, wait a minute, come on, man, it's just, you know, it's a speech like this, give me a second. So that was my experience with James Spader, but, but I'm sure he's a lovely guy. Yeah. <laughs> but he's not the one I didn't have a good experience with him, I'll just be honest with you, yeah. I'm not going to pretend I'm He's not the one we invited to the show no. this year. No, exactly. <laughs> How did it feel to leave Justice League with Kevin Conroy and the Allies, and then come back for Injustice and the Enemies? Hmm. Um, it gives you it gives you a little more to work with. It's fun when that happens. Conflict is the best is the best thing for for comedy or drama. That's great. Give me more. Superman needs more conflict. You know, he's, he can be, you know, uh, accused of being too, you know, everything's bright and cheery, but it's good that he can have a, something to butt his head up against, especially an ally or I suppose a friend, you know? Hi, George. Hello. Oh, I was just wondering, um, you were in season eight that was between 2010 and 2011 of NCIS. You played in an episode called Dead Air. Which, is this the one with Mark Harmon? Yeah, oh yeah. I think I remember something about a bomb. <laughs> Was there a bomb involved yeah, in yeah, the garage? Yeah. yeah, yeah. In the baseball field. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, I was just wondering because there's been some of them people in the last few years have been on it. Yeah, well, yeah. There's you listen if you're. So you're, how was that? Everybody it was fun. Was Mark Harmon's a lovely guy. Such uh, a lovely that's guy. What everybody said. Oh, what a lovely guy! And uh, it's actually he, he and his wife were kid, parents at my kid's school, so I, really? I saw them at the street, just you know, school fairs and stuff. Like that. Lovely guy. Oh, yeah. well, that's good to hear. Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Living in New Jersey. I was told to ask you about living in New Jersey. I was told you lived in New Jersey. Oh, I did. I lived in, New, in Princeton, New Jersey for a year. Over yeah. there. Over like, there in New Jersey. Who's from New Jersey here? Anyone? Hey, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's lovely parts of it. Hey, I'm Secaucus. Yes, there's Secaucus next. Secaucus next. But touch it. But touch it next. Yeah, right on the train. There she is. When you got the role of Superman, did you do any specific prep work prior to starting, like reading any old material, studying any other actors, or did you just kind of go in while you do your own tape? You know, I, did, I, did, I wanted to do my own thing with it, and I didn't, I knew Tim had done it, but I purposely didn't want to listen to Tim because I, I didn't want to have it in my head. Um, so, uh, no, my, I think my only remem remembrance of an animated Superman was from Super Friends from the 70s, right? And I said, guys, look like this, Superman. Very, very, you know, kind of cartoony voice, you know. So I didn't, I didn't want to do any of that. And and most, and most, uh, the Bruce Tim and Andre Romano said they just wanted to be as kind of realistic as possible. Not not realistic in the sense that you would see Adult Swim today, where people are just like, uh, you know, it's just, you know, just kind of like super conversation. But it was more realistic, not not too conversational, but more realistic. I don't know how to, if you know what I'm talking about, but. Uh, yeah, the tone the tone was not cartoony, although it was animated, and it's a kind of a fine balance to find, you know. It's, it's um, but but I didn't. Yeah, I wanted to not you know, the George Reeves, the whole the, the previous the Supermans. I didn't want to think about that. So, yeah. um, 
my fiance was just wondering how you managed to get the role of Sephiroth in Final Fantasy VII. Sephiroth, I got a call to go do um, ADR, they call it, it's an audio dubbing, ADR, audio dubbing, I don't know what they are, recording, audio dubbing, dubbing. recording, yes. Yeah. The ADR for the Japanese uh, voice, and um, Sephiroth, I don't know if you, you guys know Final Fantasy, it's sort of a big franchise, and, it, and it's uh, games and a couple movies, and this, that, and the other, and uh, the Japanese voice, American actors have to go in and do a lot of anime, but with the, uh, they have to match the lip, the lip flap of the animated part because it's expensive to go back and redo the animation. So if the Japanese actor for Sephiroth goes, um, something like that, which I have no idea what he said, but I'll read the line. It says, "I said, Cloud, get down your, get on your knees, Cloud, or something." And I, but I would have to go, Cloud, get on your knees. Like you'd have to kind of have it in an arrested sort of weird way that you would never say normally, or even a normal animation thing, but because American actors have to match Japanese anime or animation, it's, um, it can sound kind of stilted. You'll notice in all the, uh, the Spirited Away, is Kira, 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 the animator from Japan, Kira, 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 but you notice all the American, you'll see all the, all the American voices, they kind of sound like this, and, and it's kind of stilted because they did, they're matching the Japanese lip flaps, and, and the, it makes the American, <laughs> the English version sound a little, it just takes on its own thing, which is kind of cool in, in a weird way. But uh, so to answer your question, I got a call to do the post work on Sephiroth, and I thought it was a one day thing, and that turned into 17, eight, 18 years. So, <laughs> you know, sometimes you, get, you, sometimes you have a good Tuesday, and uh, uh, that's it. So for, first off, excellent job on scan. Thank you, man. Oh my God, I didn't know whether to hate your character or <laughs> like I know, right? That's, that's I consider that a compliment. I think that is a compliment. Right, but uh, or you maybe yep. memory. What was it like for you the first time your son heard Dad's voice as Superman on television? Well, he kind of looked at the TV and looked at me and looked at the TV again and back to me. <laughs> Because we didn't want to tell him, we just said he just sitting on the couch. It was so long ago. He was, it was the double take was hilarious. Dad, yep. What? Yeah, it's fun to see little kids. You know, with a voice come out of a TV that you've done. I mean, half the things I wouldn't love, want my children to see because it's either you know, too violent or something. But uh, but it is fun when you when you can have your kids see something that you've done. It was a line where Superman was scolding someone. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. It was your actor. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> also, I just realized that you were in Adventures of Babysitting. Adventures of Babysitting, yeah. That was, that was, that was right after the Crystal Reef job, yeah. Um, do you have any funny moments on set, or did you do your own stunts? Do my own stunts? I did on the Adventures of Babysitting. I don't think I had any stunts. I had to drive a Jeep, but I, I could do that. I drove a Jeep, um, and I <laughs> walked around and talked. I didn't do any stunts, but... Uh, These are special skills on the resume. You can drive a Jeep. You can drive a Jeep. <laughs> With an accent, uh, but uh, yeah, no, just uh, my guy. I just worked with Elizabeth Shue on a TV movie with Disney, um, where I played a rock star and, and a normal guy. And we switched places. It was called Double Switch. It was like in the late '80s. It was a really fun job. My God, so fun. So I met Lisa from that, and then, then I went to go work for Lisa and Invention Baby sitting like two months after that. So it was really, 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 really awesome. But no back, behind the scenes stories for Adventures of Babysitting. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't, nothing springs to mind other than I remember Leo, Leo D'Onofrio who played Thor in that, you know, he had the thing, <clears throat> it was before he was Leo D'Onofrio, I guess, and he had a big blonde wig and, and uh, I remember thinking, that guy's really cool. He's so much cooler than anybody here. That's, that was one of my memories of that. Was it W.C. Fields don't work with children and animals? Ooh, children and animals, yeah. You're working with kids in that one. That part was okay? Yeah, no, it was great. They were, they were, the kids weren't that young, basically. Even if the, yeah. they were, they were show those kids. They were, they were, they were, I got they were very sad. They had I'm the one with all the fun questions. Uh, <laughs> you've been given an injustice, injustice rather. Yeah. What's your feeling about sort of in recent years this growing fascination 
with making Superman darker, his eyes always flaring mm -hmm. red, mm -hmm. he's always angsty, and moving further and further away from the more hopeful version of the game. Yeah, yeah, well, I just think that's a, ref a mirror up to society, I guess, right? I, th I think, you know, people think when something's edgy, it must be better. It doesn't necessarily have to be better, but but I think it's just a function of, of people trying to change it up and see what that feels like and looks like. But I think it ultimately always comes back to the archetype of, uh, the archetype of Superman is, is not that. And it'll always come back to the mean for him. They're just exploring, writers, actors, you know, trying to push the, push the limits of it. How many articles out there? Is Superman still relevant to things? Yeah, right, 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 right. Right out there right. and no. look at each other. No, I, I totally agree with you. I, I totally agree. I think we need Superman now more than ever. Um, out of the main cast in Justice League, who is your favorite to work with? Uh, let's see, my favorite to work with, well, is this being recorded? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I, there's really every, and I'm not lying, I had a blast with every single person, but uh, I especially love um, giggling and, and causing problems with Kevin and Phil Lamar. Uh, we would just literally giggle and tell, tell jokes in between, and, and we would have to be told to shut up <laughs> all the time. All the time. Michael Rosenbaum sometimes, but he was actually, we, we started it, and then he, Smallville blew up, so he was up in Vancouver, or I think it was Vancouver, the whole time. Uh, and he would come back down for some sessions, but, but it was mostly uh, Phil and uh, Kevin and I giggling and acting like the 12 year old girls. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Hello. Hello. <laughs> what's going on? Um, what's your favorite? Of, what's your favorite version of Superman? My favorite version of Superman. Hmm. I liked. I liked Superman. I, lo I loved him in the Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, but I also liked the Injustice uh, Superman. I thought that was really well done. I, I felt like it was. Had a lot to do and, and um, fully fleshed out, active Superman. Very good. Good, good question. And I think we got about eight minutes left. New Jersey's got something to say. <laughs> Jersey. Shocker. Yeah. Yeah. Careful. Careful. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned you took a pilot instead of doing Friends. Was that the one with Hal Linden? Yes, it was. Well, I'll tell you how they go. Uh, Jim, Jim Burroughs, Jimmy Burroughs, the guy who, who directed all the Cheers and was a work with the Cheers creator. Um, he, he directed the pilot that I did that got picked up, Friends, and the one my, my buddy Craig did. So we all thought, hey, Jimmy Burroughs, every pilot he does gets picked up. So you can't miss. You just pick one. So he picked the other one, not friends, and I did the Hal Linden thing because I thought, you know, the Hal Linden thing's gonna go. That's gonna go for a long time. I watched it. It did, it went for 18 episodes. Uh, Craig's didn't get picked up, and then friends went for, you know, 20 million years, and they bought them. They have a planet called Planet Friends. It's like just past Mars. Yeah, so it was a big one. Yeah. If you could be any hero or villain, not Superman, uh, Marvel or DC, like what? What would you go for? Hmm. Oh my gosh. Um. Uh, that's a that's a that's, that's a question. Uh, I'm gonna have to. Broke Superman. Do what? They I broke, broke Superman. You broke Superman. Of all this <laughs> yes, you did it. Did it. <laughs> you indeed just broke Superman. I am completely broken. Uh, you know, there's not not really one super uh, hero that I think that I aspire to be. I'm pretty feel pretty comfortable and happy that uh, I do Superman. But there are parts of others that I like. I, I, something about you know Flash is makes me laugh because he gets to be a wise ass and he can you know run faster than anybody. Um, Batman's cool because he just is laid back and he gets to you know do whatever he wants. He can always get away with anything and be so. I would say between Bat, uh, some hybrid between Batman and Flash is where I live. Or Spider Man, perfect. Yeah. Spider Man is great. That's a, that's a, that, that's a, that's a great. One. Take all the scripts in the room and just shift over one person. Yes. Clancy Brown is now yep. Superman. Yep. You're Lex yep. Luthor. Let's have some fun. <laughs> that's right. Any other questions? 
Um, and it was, so besides signing a bunch of autographs with really honest, grateful, cool people the rest of the weekend, what you got coming up? Get you got coming up? Uh, let's see, I did a, uh, an episode of a show called, um, it's a live action for uh, Hulu with the guy who did Modern Family. It's called Reboot, and it's uh, Keegan-Michael Key from Key and Peele, he's in it, and Johnny Knoxville and Judy Greer. Uh, I just did an episode of that a few weeks ago, and then I um, uh, did DC Universe, a DC Superman a streaming universe. Uh, what is it? DC Unlimited? What is it called? DC Universe. DC Universe streaming, blah blah blah. So I've done a couple of those. I just did another one that's that's out now. That's really quite cool. It's really quite cool. And then another one for Warner Bros. called Dokken, the Dokken series, D-O-K-K-E-N. I don't know what it is, but it's a Superman thing for Warner Brothers. Don't worry, it's going to run for 18 years. For, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I do a lot of audiobooks. I do, if you want to go to audible.com, I've done over 400 audiobooks that I've narrated. So that's sort of my, if I'm not doing anything else, I go to my booth and I just, I narrate. I do a ton of narration. Yeah, right there, right there. Your booth. Yeah, if you do an audiobook, do you have your own place you can use? Oh, it's I have a booth in my, at my house in a separate little detached little. It's a shed, basically. But if I say studio, I make it sound fancy. Oh, yeah. It's a booth and a shed that's soundproof. Uh, the difference is whether you make your own coffee or you have it brought to you. Oh, I make my own, my friend. I make my own. But, uh, yeah, no, so, so I, I, the narration is I get up and narrate, and then if it's on camera, I go do an on-camera thing, or I do an audition in my little booth, or do a commercial, or whatever I do. I just got to keep keep it moving. Yeah. Are you more comfortable at this point in your career life staying that busy, or are you like, well, yeah, what I want to work on uh, I, I, It's great with any kind of job. You, you want to work enough to where you don't have to work as much as you don't want to. Does that make sense? Mm. So no, I pretty much say yes to everything. So I'm not sitting around. I, I, I do anything. I just I like to stay busy. So I'm working actually at this fun old place, the Supernatural place. After we're done, awesome. I just did, it's just a two hour shift because I had some downtime. So so we can give you the wink and say yeah. a little extra cheese on that. Yes, a little extra cheese. There we go. Four minutes. <laughs> can you do, can you say, okay, like you did when you were being Danny? Oh. oh okay. Or something like that. I don't know. I can't try to remember. Okay. Yeah. Door slam. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Any questions? Yeah. Um, Danny, you did the Batman I'll give you my, uh, my Batman impression yeah, in good. one word. Mm -hmm. Cash. Cash. What's that from? That's when, from the man who has everything. Oh, you didn't get him gift certificates, did you? No. Cash. 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 Yeah, it's good. Yeah, good. <laughs> How are we doing, everybody? Two, two more questions. No worries. Yeah. Hi, George. Hello. Um, how did Saw Six come about? My manager uh, represents the or the, uh, the producer of that show, and she said, "Hey, they, they, well, you want a job? Yeah, they fly out." And, play this part for three days. And I was like, okay, like yeah. I do. And I got on a plane and go. And, and I didn't know anything about this. I don't like scary movies, first of all. I don't like to be scared. I don't like to be scared. Some people like it, but I have never seen Saw 6. I just did my scene and I walked away. But, uh, uh, but apparently it's a really terrifying movie. I understand. I like it. No. You guys scary. like scary movies? No? Yes. You like scary movies? Yes. What, what's, what's behind liking scary movies? Is it you like the adrenaline? You like the adrenaline rush because you know you're not going to really get hurt, so that feels good. Sure. Or you all just really mean. I wake up from a bad dream and I'm like, oh my god, I'm glad that's not real, and I don't want to like go, go pay money to go feel like that. Yeah. Anyway, that's. Just, yeah. Um. Hi. Hello. What's something you would say to someone who's aspiring to be an actor? Um. I would say if, if, if you think you want to be an actor or a voice actor or anything like that, um, I would say get into a, an acting class and audition for a play and find out if you like it. And if you like it, <clears throat> you know, you, j just because you like something and have a passion for it doesn't mean you have to make your living at it. That's one thing I've learned as I've gotten older. Sometimes your your passion and your and your um, ability to, to make your living at it they don't always they don't always happen. They don't always line up. But you can still have a job where you make money and a job that you love doing at the same time. So and there's no that doesn't mean one is successful more successful than the other. 
It just means you get to do a lot of things in your life. So if you love to act, get into an acting class, get into a play, and see if you love it, and then just see where it takes you. You know, um, but uh, and if you make a living, it's, if you get to make a living as an actor, that's fantastic. It's just gravy. But but I know lots of people who are so passionate about it or art or music, and they they just do it because they love it, and they don't have to pay their rent with it because sometimes it's just too hard, and sometimes people don't pay you enough to do that. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it and learn to do it and makes you a better person and makes you a more interesting person and makes you more connected to creation and all of us, you know. Yeah, better to just do that. That is now my favorite Superman speech. All right then. Now, yeah. I think we have to about wrap it up here. I want to thank everyone for coming out. Yeah. On your feet, hands together, Mr. George.